we all know the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde story. The first protagonist is refined, educated, a civilized man of great knowledge, societal standing, and an embodiment of physical and intellectual appeal. The latter character is the complete opposite, a primitive human with a more beastly pedigree who operates with a whole set of contrary and wild rules. What is most intriguing about this story is the relentless struggle between the two different identities at any point in time within the novel's narrative. They actually coexist. One never fully overcomes the other, wrestling and vying for control and domination. And it's these struggles of these polarities within a single mind that I want to discuss, ebbing and flowing like the waves of an ocean. I'd like to reveal how such a phenomenon does indeed exist in the Arab world. Not in a fictional book sense, as in the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but in a real and tangible way, a manifestation of life imitating art. A substantial number of Arabs have either dealt with this behavioral condition or have been impacted by it one way or another in the recent past, and many even struggle with it today. Before I jump into the analysis of this behavioral condition, let me qualify one element. When I use the analogy of Jekyll and Hyde, please extract the existing narrative concerning the wild, villainous, or violent character and conduct of Mr. Hyde. Let us simply acknowledge that these two personalities, behaviors, moralities, and whatever else embodies them are severe opposites. Two sets of societal values that are in total contradiction with each other. And with this qualification, I introduce the two polarities that characterize a significant part of the prevalent Arab personality. Hadara and Bedawa. Hadara meaning civilization, and Bedawa denoting Bedouin tribalism. You'll hear these two personalities depicted as Hadari and Bedawi, meaning the populations who inhabit or inhabited the cities and towns, versus the latter who lived in the Arabian desert or Badia. Others define them as urban and nomadic. These two personas exist in every Arab to a certain extent or another. It's all relative to how early urbanization and integration happened to them. Almost all Bedouins are now considered urbanized, yet some have only committed to sedentary life as early as 20 to 30 years ago. Theirs is the most powerful of Bedawa, tribalism, whereas those who had lived in urban or semi-urban centers for many decades and even centuries still maintain fundamental remnant elements of tribal instinct, loyalties, and values. And the coexistence of these two personalities within the one Arab mind presents a major problem especially after the creation of the nation-states in the Arab world. Once the people became united under one independent nation over the last 50 to 60 years, both Hadara and Badawa clashed big time in a highly accelerated manner. Not only in the sense of different peoples coming together, but in the demands of the necessary remolded mindsets expected of the state's citizens in terms of nationalism, hierarchies, loyalties, infrastructure, education, freedoms, rule of law, and so on. Obviously, for most Arabs, there's a third set of values we also have to identify, and that's the religious layer, including all its sectarianism and traditionalism that at this stage would just complicate the whole discussion. So I shall omit it for the sake of simplifying this narrative. Otherwise, it will be way too complex. Because one thing is for sure, more often than not, is that the demands of Hadara, Badawa, and Diana, civilization, tribalism, and religion, is that they can all be opposing each other within one single Arab mind and moment. And that's way too complicated for this video, even if truly reflective of the Arab condition. So how are these two personas so opposite and in an eternal state of conflict? Well, let's go over what each represents. So if we start with Badawa, tribalism, then this represents conservatism, loyalty above all else to the tribe or the clan, above any other civil institution or state. The rule of honor and pride dominates, belief in an archaic justice system that is self-applied, in traditionalism of roles of men and women in society, and in the insignificance of human rights and equality. The allegiance is mainly to the tribe and the collective behavior be it through a set of values, beliefs, and principles that the tribe is founded upon. Hadara is the absolute opposite of this. It prioritizes national pride and loyalty above all else, 
and expects such a commitment from all its subjects. The tribal element has dissolved away. It commands absoluteness of justice through civil law. Havara is open to modernity and the embrace of new ideas in progressing society. It integrates the culture of a people into a homogeneous entity. It instills that all individuals are equal and that the rights and opportunities of man and woman are to be protected. In Havara, the key word is individual, and its foundation is independent behavior, and the allegiance is only to the state and its institutions. Ibn Khaldun in his Al-Muqaddimah speaks of this phenomenon, Asabiya, which is a more macro embodiment of Badawa, and how civilizations and empires began with a strong Asabiya, strong tribal togetherness, that then dilutes over many generations, thereby bringing forth the end of days for that given empire. The only problem for today's Arab world was that the jump into statehood and modernity happened way too fast. There was no time for the divisive elements of Asabiya between the various tribes to brew into a single homogenous bowl of soup. This concept was also heavily examined by the famous Iraqi sociologist Dr. Ali Al-Wardi, whose theories on the personality of the Iraqi individual and the push and pull of the duality within the Iraqi mind between Hadari and Bedawi truly represented the entirety of Arab nations who hailed a significant part of the populations from recent and even ancient Bedouin tribes. Al-Wardi has a famous quote about this internal conflict within Arabs. Although it's not specifically about the Hadara and Badawa conflict, but more about the Hadara Diana, the statehood slash religious struggle, it does actually hit home. And it goes like this. If the Arabs had the choice between two states, secular and religious, they would vote for the religious and flee to the secular. So we've spoken about the theory of this hypocrisy of values that exists in the Arab mind. But what are some real-life examples of this internal conflict? Imagine the actions of a modernized liberal Arab man who will independently seek his future wife. Meet her, get to know her, exchange intimate letters and gradually arrive at the moment when he'll propose to her. Now imagine that same man stumbling on a set of similar intimate letters, but that were either sent by a strange man and then received by his sister. All hell would break loose. Sinful accusations of his sister would surely ensue. The more tangible examples we see of this duality of beliefs and actions are the many cases of honor killings we see taking place across the Arab world. Killings by good standing members of society like our friend who was fine with writing his own love letters, an individual who is well-educated, highly skilled, and an exemplary citizen who followed the rule of law to the letter, except when the honor of their family, clan, and tribe was put to the test. All civility goes out the window, and justice, harsh justice, is taken into the hands of the citizen and the members of his clan, even though illegal governments would condone such actions by passing lenient sentences on those who had taken the law into their own hands. And with such accommodation, the honor killings happen over and over again. Within the civil services realm of many Arab nations, we also see this personality conflict greatly take place. In many public institutions, the internal mental debate between doing what is best and most professional for the country and its citizens is met by its antithesis, and that is to use one's position for their own betterment or that of their own tribe. This conflict is reflective of a subconscious struggle between the moral civil servant and the Bedouin whose history has always condoned the element of looting. Another behavioral example comes when a situation of authority brings out these contradictions. Amongst the tribal and familiar environments, a certain man or woman might be prideful, powerful, assertive, and outspoken. Yet when the same individual is exposed to a person of civil authority, they become submissive, accepting an inferiority that dominates his or her persona. A final example of this behavioral dissonance is how Arabs view each other in the presence of humility versus harshness. One who is harsh and overbearing and really doesn't care how you'd feel upon his ruthlessness is immediately granted high respect and regard. That is the way of a Bedouin. While on the other hand, the one who shows humility and favor would treat you with all decency as with the ways of a Hadari would be cast down as weak, disregarded, and presumed insignificant. 
It's quite apparent that these two sets of social values exist within any Arab citizen. There is though a wide range of the ratio in Arab populations where one persona is more dominant than the other. But that's not necessary to define. The reality is that this duality exists amongst all Arabs in varying degrees. Maybe a more complex reality if we tack back on board the Muslim layer, which we omitted much earlier. But is this the fate of Arabs? To live in a perpetual state of hypocrisy? I don't really think so. Arabs require a balance between the two, no sorry, the three sets of values. Why can't we have the Bedouin chivalry without the uncivility? the modernity without the abandonment of identity, the faith through and through. They are not exclusive of each other. They can coexist in a way that defines who Arabs ultimately should be. Unique. Arabs have to find that unique place, where they operate best, in their own Havara Badawa Diana concoction. Not with any aspirations to mimic the West or other unnatural and foreign ways of being but to transcend their current existence and be the better people that they have the promise to be.